Supernatural fairy tales by art. Check it out, got my I came in and do it. I was doing full battle with the Krylorians. Oh my god, they're invading. Listen to that. What a great gun. It's fucking great. You gotta have that when you're when you're going through the cosmos like your friend Cosmic Brian here, you gotta have protection. <laughs> Jesus. Welcome aboard, cosmonauts! This is another edition of Cosmic Vinyl. Um, I'm going to try and revisit something today that I haven't done in a while. A while back, I did a progressive rock video. I was inspired by um, Scott over at Prog Corner. Um, great channel. Everything that is prog rock, he definitely covers over there. And he's got super great energy, man. The guy is a uh, dynamo and a uh, really great show he has over there. But I did kind of a tribute uh, progressive rock video. And I got to tell you, man, his hardcore fans, some of them came over and dumped on me so fucking bad uh, about my lack of knowledge of the progressive rock genre. Man, I never claim to be an expert on anything, any of this type of music, let alone progressive rock. So, you know, glare going on the heart. But anyway, we're going to give it another whirl here. Um, I, I do love progressive rock, and I go through, like, these phases. I, I'm phasing again, vinyl community, where I listen to one kind of music and then another. And I've been kind of getting into a little progressive rock. In fact, I was walking through the thing that spurred it on. I was walking through the local grocery store and they were playing Roundabout by Yes over the uh, intercom thing. And I was like, God damn, this is such a great song. And it kind of spurred me into listening to a little uh, stuff from the Cosmic Collection that falls into the progressive rock era stuff. But this, this is kind of a prog psych record that we're opening with here. Uh, this is art. It's called uh, Supernatural Fairy Tales. And check out that cover, man. That is groovy. Uh, for, this is uh, members of this band went on to form Spooky Tooth. Spooky! Fucking right. Why did I do that? Anyway, so we're going to, I pulled 10 albums uh, from the progressive rock uh, genre, and we're going to show them today, man. You'll see all the biggies. You'll see a few obscurities, but most of these are pretty well known. So, all right, let's get this party started. Ready to look at my Batman koozie here, man. Rocking the Deadpool t-shirt, man. From, what, did anybody see the movie, Deadpool and Wolverine? Oh, oh my, my God! God. It's freaking awesome, man. Um, so the battle scenes were incredible, man. Um, so I, I'm stunned, man, because this is Disney, right? Marvel is Disney. And how many times that Deadpool breaks the fourth wall and trashes Disney or 
uh, Marvel is, uh, and he calls himself Marvel Jesus. Jesus, it's funny. I love it, man. If you haven't checked out the Deadpool and Wolverine movie, man, you must. You must. And um, here's what we're drinking underneath here. A little liney, uh, summer shandy. We, I've shown it before. I've drank it before. Ah, it's a twister. Oh, I was going to throw it at you. I forgot. Oh, well. Hey, let's hoist it up and toss it back. This is to all my friends out there in the vinyl community. And I'd like to say, uh, give a shout out to my friends in the comic book community as well, man. Uh, guys like Psychotronic Squirt Gun, uh, Cheap Comic Collector, uh, Higgy Pop uh, Comics. I uh, love all you guys, man. So, but this is to my vinyl community friends and my comic community friends. Let's hoist it up and toss it back right now! Oh, yes, yes, my good friend, of course. Oh, I must have been a little thirsty. <laughs> yes! <laughs> all right, let's get these mind shields off and I'll get into my specs and we'll get started. Woo! this man gonna start off with a biggie right here man uh these guys were huge in the progressive rock uh a genre and this is king crimson uh this one's called uh in the wake of the P uh, poseidon Great artwork, man. It's freaking fantastic. Um, but yeah, released in 1970 on Island Records. I think this one is um, an Epic Records release, though. Um, very similar to their debut record uh, in the Court of the Crimson King. So if you dig that, you'll probably dig this. Kind of the same formula. Um, in fact, there's songs on here that easily could have been on that album as well. Look at that. What a great cover, man. That is fantastic. And then um, just a, a swirling, cloudy weirdness here. Um, that's what I see sometimes when I'm sitting getting baked and listening to music. <laughs> Jesus. But yeah, this is great, man. Um, Robert Fripp and the boys. Uh, in my preparation for this video, I read that uh, Greg Lake was planning on kind of leaving the band. He was kind of on the fence, right? And um, I read where Elton John was considered to be brought in to sing on the album. Um, and at that time, he was still pretty early in his career. Uh, but then I think the, they went, Robert Fripp uh, went in a different, they decided to go in a different direction. But um, God, how cool would that have been, man? Freaking Elton John singing for King Crimson. It's crazy. But yeah, this is definitely a good one, man. Worth checking out. And God, that cover is amazing. I think I picked this up at a uh, collectible shop in uh, my hometown of Fort Dodge, Iowa. And I got it for like six bucks. What? I love it. This is another cool one. Uh, look, great cover again, man. Look at that. This is Captain Beyond! Sounds like a superhero, right? But look at those graphics, man. Trippy! It's called uh, Sufficiently Breathless, released in 1973 on the uh, Capricorn label. I gotta tell you, man, there's a little story behind, behind how I got this record. Um, I was in uh, Denver, Colorado. I, my daughter went to visit some friends out there. She eventually ended up living out there. 
But um, while she went off to stay with her friends, I stayed in the hotel, but I took the shuttle to the bus to the train or whatever and i ended up downtown and i went to this great uh record store i want to say it was called dead wax i think it was but anyway um while i'm shuffling through the records i had grabbed this and a couple other records and it hit me like like a fucking gut punch i just all of a sudden felt so sick i was shaking like i, I couldn't control my hands i couldn't even friggin hold the practically hold the albums uh got really feverish and i started to like lose my like i was disoriented and all that and i took the albums up to the counter and i'm sitting there you know trying to pay the guy with my money and my, i didn't have, i was fumbling with my cash and my card Finally, the guy actually had to help me run my card through the machine because I just got so sick and I was miles and miles from uh, the airport where I had to go there to get on the shuttle to go to the hotel. And I don't know how I made it, man, because I didn't know my head from my ass. Well, I don't, that's usual, but uh, I ended up get being having sepsis. I was so sick, man. And it just happened to happen when I was uh, buying records. Look at that. Great wraparound cover there. Giving you the full effect, y'all. Isn't that great? Here's the gatefold, which is also super cool. Look at the band. Look at the friggin' band. This is kind of a jazzier kind of vibe than their other record that came out before this. Um, still like it, man. It's pretty smooth. Pretty smooth prog there. Captain Beyond! Now, y'all are gonna recognize this one. This is a, a giant. These guys are giants! They walk amongst uh, mere mortals in the progressive rock genre. But another cool cover, I think this is a Roger Dean cover, by the way. Um, this is a frag fragile as you guys call but what we call we're a little more refined here at cosmic vinyl we call it fragile fragile yes yes released in 1971 atlantic records uh this one brings back some childhood memories for me man because i remember hearing songs off this like roundabout man what a great song and speaking of roundabout i lived in dallas texas and we used to go see the, this band at this place called Dallas City Limits, right? This band was called Mannequin. I don't know where they were from, but holy shit. They didn't, you know, we're in the 80s, right, at this time. And everybody's, you know, the bands are like playing Rat and, uh, you know, Motley Crue and stuff. Going to see Mannequin, you'd never hear them play any of that stuff. They always reworked uh, really like uh, cool and complex songs like roundabout and they just killed it man it was probably one of the coolest covers of roundabout that i'd ever seen oh you guys are screaming for the full effect there you go look at that great cover man but yeah you got roundabout on this um i think the band was kind of shifting gears a little bit with this album um i think uh they had some lineup changes and stuff, but man, this is a classic. Great stuff, man. Uh, everybody knows about this. I got this from Bill. Um, he's a guy that, I can't remember the channel name. I haven't watched him in a long time, um, but he was a prog guy here in the vinyl community. And he sent me that, I won a, a, a prog package and he sent me this, man, it's great condition. Killer record, man. Now this next record I could have easily, easily used in my last uh, little walk down memory lane video, or little time machine uh, here at Cosmic Vinyl, the last video. Uh, this is an album uh, that we used to listen to back then. Sorry about the glare, we got the shrink rock in here, but this is Rush Moving Pictures. Um, oh my, it's, I bought it at Co-op Records, still got the Co-op sticker on there. But yeah, released in 81, uh, and that was about the time that we were talking about in the last video, uh, Mercury Polygram Records. This album is kicks ass. My friend had this great stereo system, uh, Pioneer all the way, man, that uh, he put together. 
And if you, you have to listen to this loud. This is like that Boston record. It's got great production on it. And when you play it loud, it sounds just absolutely stunning. And um, of course, you got Tom Sawyer. Today is Tom Sawyer. He gets high on you. The space he invades, he gets by on you. But you got the red barchetta. What else we got on this fucking thing, man? Um, YYZ, Limelight, Camera Eye. And then the song that used to scare the living shit out of me. Witch Hunt! Witch Hunt! <laughs> Jesus, love it, man. But yeah, this is one that uh, easily could have been on that... Uh, uh, on that last video, there's a back cover, man. Very cool record, man. Rush was really kicking it into gear uh, at this part, at this time of their career. Uh, amazing, amazing stuff, man. And then moving right along, one of the best album covers you're gonna see right here in this video, and this is um, Gentle Giant Octopus. Look at that, it's an octopus in a jar. Here, let me screw it off and I'll let him out and we'll. We'll play with the puss. Jesus. <laughs> what is wrong with me? Anyway, uh, released in 1972 on um, Columbia Records. Another Roger Dean cover. I think this is a Roger Dean cover. I know there's two covers for this. Uh, both of them are equally as cool. Uh, this one has the die cut. The other one doesn't. But yeah, uh, Gentle Giant. Jeez. Uh, some of the most complex musical arrangements you'll ever hear put to wax. Uh, even for progressive rock, these guys were like uh, really intricate uh, changes and signatures. Absolutely crazy. Uh, the way they came up with the song, the, uh, uh, the album name, um, they had eight songs and they were going around saying Octo Opus, like oct it's an eight song opus, their record. Uh, and they just shortened it up and called it Octopus. Pretty clever, these guys, right? I mean, these guys like wrote, li their lyrical content uh, was all about like uh, literature and philosophy. Oh yeah, these guys were deep. They went deep, Vinyl Community. But yeah, man, deep thinkers. Uh, very unique vocal styling on this. Absolutely love this record, man. There's the back cover. There's their little mascot, that little gentle giant there. I love this. It's so great. It's fucking great. Uh, this might be one of the favorite ones that I'm going to show here today, man. This is Touch. released in um oh shit i think it was god i'm gonna have to guess because i didn't write it down i think it was like 69 maybe 70 that's a guess it's a guess people but check out this cover it's like it opens like this only to show you nothing <laughs> jesus uh the yeah the payoff isn't that great but um very cool record man uh, this is by some considered the cornerstone of uh, American progressive rock right here, man. Um, as they open the doors for a lot of American bands to play, to start uh, prog bands. Um, this band features one Don, Dan, or Don Gallucci, who was in Don in the Good Times, which garage rock, pop rock from the 60s. I love those guys. Um, but after the release of Sgt. Pepper's, uh, Don just considered what they were doing with Don in the good times to be just kind of redundant. So he put together Touch and they came out with this progressive rock band and uh, album. And during the recording of this, I guess the atmosphere was pretty, uh, very party-like atmosphere. Um, people were dropping in while they were recording like Mick Jagger. Jimi Hendrix, Grace Slick. What kind of a fucking... 
That would have been great. Can you imagine recording your debut album and you've got Jagger and Slick and Hendrix popping in to say hey? Absolutely mind-boggling. But yeah, man, this is a uh, very cool, man. Uh, I'm gonna give you the full effect though because uh, the outer cover, because the inner, the gatefold isn't nothing. But look at that! Look at that! Flying naked, fellas. They love it though. Hell, if I was flying through space, I don't care if I was clothed or not. I'd be like, whoa! This is fucking great! Anyway, this is definitely worth checking out right here. Ah! Oh, look at I almost forgot to show this. Look at that great inner sleeve. London Records, man. Oh my God, I love it when they have the colored uh, inner sleeve. It's a beaut! And then moving along to Soft Machine, man. Love Soft Machine. This is their debut record, released in 1968 on uh, ABC Records. Um, this is the only Soft Machine album to feature one Kevin Ayers, who went on to do uh, some solo stuff that's really cool. Uh, guys are from the Canterbury scene. Um, another thing, man, they used to play the UFO Club, uh, playing with uh, bands like Pink Floyd. Can you imagine that show back in the friggin' late 60s, going and seeing Floyd and Soft Machine at, a U at the UFO Club? Mind blown! <laughs> Can't stand it. But yeah, really cool record, man. Love this. Um, again, unique style vocals. Ooh, look at Stony Curtis right there. He's lit up. <laughs> Jesus, I love it. Uh, great cover. I I turn that crank right there, wouldn't you? I sure wouldn't put her to sleep. I might. Who knows? Knock the boots! Knock her to put her to sleep! <laughs> I don't know what I'm saying. I'm on. But check this out. The uh, golden orange uh, transparent vinyl. Woo -hoo -hoo -hoo! Gotta love that. The colored vinyl, baby! Moving right along, we've got Can Monster. Or what is it? Monster Movie. <laughs> off there they just took his face out gave him a little different color uh but you know galactus the planet devourer from marvel comics whoa listen to this everybody look what's going down that's an art supernatural fairy tale doing a little cover of uh a rip roaring cover of um for what it's worth i love it by buffalo springfield anyway back to monster movie here uh, yes, uh, this is a music fact or re originally released on Music Factory uh, Liberty Records, 1969. This is a spoon reissue. Um, God, I love Can Man. You know one thing about Can? Listen to their music. Always made me think that uh, it's it's very it seems so improvisational, man. Like they just like you know started playing and the singer. Uh, in fact, the singer on this one is. Um, Oh, what the hell is that guy? Mo Mooney. Malcolm Mooney, their first singer that's on this record. Um, and then he just kind of, it's like he kind of makes it up, but it, it just works, man. Uh, like funky, uh, very repetitive. The beats and the rhythms are super re like repetitive, but not like in a boring, bad way, but more of in a like entrancing or enchanting way, man. Um, and there's a song called You Do Right that takes up the whole side too. That, I mean, I every time I hear it, man, I get up and bounce around and dance and stuff. I remember one time being all stoned out and dancing around in my underwear in the kitchen listening to it. Jesus, in the middle of the night. 
Uh, there's a band, the Cansters. Some call it crop, crop rock, space rock, whatever. Uh, I call it fucking cool as hell, man. Uh, great inner sleeve here. A little bit about the band. Some great pics of the band there. Oh, yeah. Killer stuff, man. Can. And then uh, another song that I heard this week on the radio, and I loved it. Uh, this is Pink Floyd, Wish You Were Here, released in 75 on Colum Originally on Harvest. I think this is a Columbia uh, reissue here. Um, a Hypnosis cover there. Woo, baby. Uh, definitely an iconic record cover there. Um, I remember the song Shine On You Crazy Diamond, which takes up a good part of this album. Um, I remember going and seeing the band Ghost, and they had this little guitar duel between their two guitarists where they played that opening guitar part from Shine On You Crazy Diamond where it goes, do, 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 do. And they kept going back and forth and until they started having this like rip roaring duel. Uh, love Ghost. Ghost is kind of a modern prog rock a little bit. But yeah, lyrical content on this is about alienation and also uh, criticism of the record company. You've got uh, Have a Cigars on this. Um, but yeah, man, uh, uh, Shine On You Crazy Diamond. It was kind of a tribute to their uh, former uh, singer and band member. Sid Barrett, who actually showed up on scene on the set when they were uh, recording this uh, album, and he was barely recognizable. I'll try and slip a picture in here, man, of him, of what he looked like at that time. Another cool inner sleeve there. The aliens, the aliens. And now I saved this best one for last. This is my favorite progressive rock album in my collection. Eloy inside. This is heavy. on the Harvest label. This, this is a Janus issue here. Some people call it prog rock, kraut rock, uh, space rock. I could I almost put this in my space rock video a couple weeks ago. Um, I read where a lot of people think that they were influenced uh, by Jethro Tull, and I hear that, but I like this better. I like this better than Jethro Tull. Uh, way better, actually. It's got psych elements, it's heavy, it's dark, uh, it's got swirling Hammond organ, lots of cool shifting instrumental interplay, uh, fantastic record, man, and another amazing cover. There's the full effect for you. What is that? Is that a coin? It looks like he's got a coin. Maybe he's going to drop it in there. I don't know what's going on. But here's the, the gatefold with the band. Looking badass. They look like a prog band. A German prog band. Love this, man. Great album. All right, that's it. Ten prog albums. Damn you, Krylorians. Oh, no. The Kree and the Skrulls are joining in. Jesus. All right, guys. Uh, stay cool, stay cosmic, man. If you like what you see, hit the subscription bell, man. Hit that like button. Just fucking nail it. Get down. I <laughs> love you guys, man. I'll see you next week. I, oh, God, I stubbed my knee against my record crate. Oh, dude, I'm riffing, wrecking, smacking, wrecking.